Um, cool. So I'll I'll start with a couple check-ins as per usual. Um, so the main thing on the horizon is uh, Calico 318. Um, we're looking at a mid-February release uh, there. Um, the main things to talk about there are uh, some improvements to service advertisement. Um, so uh, long awaited capability to advertise uh, service load balancer IP addresses. Um, you know, today Calico can advertise cluster IPs and external IPs, but uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't doesn't do load balancer addresses, uh, but that will change in 3.18. Um, so you can do stuff like run it alongside the Metal LB controller, which allocates those for uh, environments where you don't have um, you know, a cloud provider integration to do that sort of thing. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, the other improvement that we're working on there is um, adding an ability to exclude certain nodes from service uh, advertisement. So, um, you know, we've, we've seen this before uh, upstream uh, as well as in a uh, few users have asked for this where, um, you know, some nodes you don't want to be bearing that traffic coming in. Uh, to your to your cluster, so uh, control plane nodes are the the typical example here, where you might not actually run workloads on them, but by default they still get included in in the data path for um, you know load balancer traffic. So um, so yeah, we're we're adding a, a label you can you can stick on on your nodes and it will prevent them from being included in the data path for that traffic. Uh, so that's what we're doing for service advertisement. I think that um, Sean is also looking at uh, support for host endpoints in the BPF data plane, but uh, not sure what the latest status is on that. So maybe Sean can talk about it, if there's anything to say. Yeah, still um, hope, to, uh, hope to get that in. Um, just due to the way the releases are, are falling, um, we're actually working on that for our enterprise release, and then we'll upstream it into open source because it's a, an open source uh, feature. But exactly how the timing works out for all that is TBD, but yeah, it will, it will end up, will end up there. So I think those are the, the three main things that we're working on for 318. It's a little bit of a um, smaller release with the holidays and everything, but. Um, I think some of those IPAM like check and improvement things might make it in. Yeah, for sure. We're, we are um, hoping to add a little bit better IPAM diagnostic capabilities, get a little bit more visibility into what's going on in, uh, in IPAM uh, as well. Uh, so that's like the, probably will be the first of many uh, incremental improvements in that area. Um, so we did just release um, 3.16.6, I believe it was, is the, the patch number. Um, it's effectively a, a rebuild of 3.16.5 that pulls in um, newer newer base images to fix um, fix the CVE and SSL. Um, so. Uh, yeah, you may have spotted that. 
think that was the only change uh, in that release. And I think that's it for release updates. Um, Eric, you want to talk to us a little bit about what's going on in uh, operator install land? Um, sure, yeah. Um, not too many things right now. Um, uh, one thing that's being worked on is, um, I, I, may, I may have mentioned this before, I, I can't remember, um, is previously we had, um, we had tried uh, having the operator deploy images by uh, SHA or uh, by digest. Um, and we found that there were issues with that when using private registries uh, because we had those built in. Um, it's still something that some people need uh, to be able to reference them by digest. And so uh, working on um, adding a, an ability to specify uh, that di those digests uh, for use cases that need that. Um, I think one other thing that I don't think I mentioned before here is um, uh, we're, we've added in a, um, a tolerations, a control plane tolerations. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's merged uh, to master. Um, but it's basically so like you could ha let um, kube controllers um, run on uh, you know, maybe some nodes that you specifically have uh, designated as uh, kind of like control plane components uh, type thing. So just uh, some tolerations config. Do you have a way to do node selectors there as well? Mm, uh, yeah, yes, that, that, sorry, yeah, that was already there uh, for kube controller. Um, they're, they're both prefixed, uh, I think, with uh, control plane. So there's control plane node selector and control plane uh, tolerations. So yeah, uh, I think that's, that's all I have right now. Uh, to go with those, isn't, there's a, I thought you said you were doing something with um, affinities at some point. Is that oh, coming up right. as well. Uh, right, that's already in, right, Turk and Master? Yeah, um, let's see. And how is, uh, oh, wait, Turk, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about that. We uh, thought the use case for like Typha node selector didn't make as much sense as the rest of the components. Um, it's pretty critical to uh, cluster functionality. Um, so we added a new field for specifically controlling Typha's affinity. It's just called, I think, uh, Typha affinity. Um, and it looks identical to a regular affinity uh, attribute, except it only exposes like node affinity. Um, so you can use that to make, to set the like prefer, prefer during scheduling, um, ignore during execution on, on Typha. Yeah, we explicitly uh, don't allow the required during scheduling because, yeah, that turns that we always need Typha. So, yeah. Thanks, Casey. Um, cool. I think, let's see, we've got Jerome and Nathan on the call. Is there anything you guys want to say about uh, Calico VPP work? Hey guys, um, sure. So yeah, I'd like to, to uh, give a quick update on Calico VPP. So uh, first, since the last community call, we released version 0 0.11, um, which is the first version that uh, enables policy support by default. Um, so right now it supports uh, Kubernetes policies and we're working on supporting the full uh, Calico policies feature set. Um, this version also comes with a few fixes, um, a big one for compatibility with containerd, a few other things here and there. And the last um, version 0.11.1 um, comes with um, Calico version uh, 3.17.1 as well. We upgraded the, the Calico version. 
Um, and so for what's coming next, uh, we are now looking at, uh, well, of course, uh, supporting the, the full Calico policies. Um, we are looking at um, uh, implementing maglev load balancing as well, um, which is uh, something we had some, some requests for. Um, and we're also wondering if um, we could uh, integrate the VPP data plane in the uh, the operator as, as well uh, at some point. Um, that's something we are, we are starting to, to look at. Um, and finally, um, last but not least, we are working with Casey on a talk at FOSDEM, um, which will take place on uh, February 7th, um, where we, we, we have a structure that is sort of similar to the talks that we did at KubeCon, uh, but we're going to dig a bit more into um, the technical details. So feel free to attend if that's something that's uh, interesting for you. And I think that's it, unless uh, Nathan or Jerome, you want to add something? There, there is maybe just one little addition. There is the um, the interrupt. So we right. follow the talk. We did uh, some work on the interrupt mode. So getting away from the, the busy loop uh, that we add that eats all the um, the CPUs, and uh, we're trying to see how if we can achieve the same performance with less uh, CPU uh, consuming idle mode, and uh, we are getting actually quite uh, quite nice performance uh, with so we are we've been testing with FireGuard uh, and IPsec, and uh, it gives uh, gives actually good numbers. So. Yeah. And also a nice uh, reduction in CPU usage, so that's uh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, Eloise. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I've got a <laughs> no limited number of faces that show up on my screen at once. Was I being? <laughs> Uh, Alex, did you want to say anything about the training course? Sure. So the, the training course we man mentioned uh, last month, the um, certified Calico operator level one is the title of the course. Um, that's now live and generally available to the public. Uh, we've got uh, pretty good feedback on it so far with uh, around three and a half thousand people currently working their way through the course of the moment. Um, and that number is going up each week. Um, so pretty happy with how that's going. Um, if anybody on the call gives it a go and you've got feedback, then uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and share that with me. Uh, great, were there any other updates that I might have missed or that anybody wanted to, to hop in on here. If not, then I've got an update on our favorite hot issue, which is the, uh, the API server heartbeat issue, um, which manifested as Occasionally, anything talking to the API server would just stop receiving um, updates and wouldn't notice that its connection was dead. Um, so they finally released uh, a version of the API machinery that had that fixed. And we have updated uh, Calico to, to pull in that, that fixed version. Um, so Calico 3.18 for sure will have um, that fix in it, which is awesome. Um, haven't yet looked at the feasibility of uh, backboarding that yet. I know that there was some trouble that they had upstream and they couldn't backboard the fix beyond uh, the 0.19 version of the API machinery, um, which may limit some of the backport uh, feasibility there, but um, I'm excited that that's going to be in, in 3.18. Uh, I'm 
Uh, I think that was the only real issue that that I had to, to talk about there. Um, we did get a handful of fun issues recently um, about, what was it called? Calico Cat Cafe video game, uh, which popped up, I think, all in a matter of a couple days. Don't, don't play dumb, Casey. <laughs> you know that Maybe. you play the Magical Girl Cat Cafe. Or <laughs> Maybe I have played it. All I know is that the Witching Woods quest is glitched <laughs> and it wouldn't let me complete it. The cat ignores me at the end. Uh, but that was fun. Uh, and it looks like at least a few of those issues were able to be resolved without our intervention. So uh, good outcomes there. That's good community work. Yep. Um, were there any other issues that anybody wanted to shine a light on? If not, then I want Stephen to... Harris couldn't make the call, but uh, but he's hit uh, another issue with CPF data plane, so he's been helping us uh, diagnose that. Um, seeing connections uh, getting dropped sometimes um, when they come in on a load balancer in AWS. Um, and the pod is local to the node where the, where the packet initially arrives, which is unusual because normally when we have problems, it's for um, like other, other nodes. It's a much, the the yeah, packet doesn't say. draw with is the simple case that we don't <laughs> normally have any trouble with. So yeah, investigating that. So I wanted to give um, a couple shout outs. Um, uh, first to uh, Reza, who's a frozen process on GitHub. Um, he's been a pretty, pretty regular contributor over the last few months and is continuing to um, fix up a lot of uh, good quality of life improvements, especially in the, the Calico Kettle repo. Um, so most recently, he's been working on uh, kubeconfig context support, um, as well as uh, standardizing some of the flags there so that they behave more like um, kubectl does, uh, which I think is a great, great way to not frustrate people, uh, make tools act the way that they expect them to. Um, so yeah, really, really appreciate the work that he's been doing there. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to Ricardo Katz, who um, he's been working a lot upstream in Kubernetes with the uh, network policy um, working group that, uh, that's been, kind of chugging away at some ideas for network policy for a little while. I think the first one that um, that working group kind of agreed to tackle was extending upstream network policy to support port ranges. So previously, um, each rule could just specify a single port, um, but now uh, they've agreed on a spec to allow for uh, an end port, which means you know that rule will match all traffic for any port within the range of the, the start port and end port. Um, and so not only has he been working on that spec, but he's gone out and pushed an update. Um, he's raised a couple of PRs against the Calico to actually implement that uh, API change. So once it gets merged, we'll have the code right there. Um, so that's that's some, some awesome work from uh, Ricardo. I had one, so uh, um, we got 
um, uh, I think it was on Calico users uh, user called Arian. They're um, developing an admission controller to help with managing stateful set IPs. Um, so Calico already has a feature where you can force a particular pod to use a particular IP, which is would be really useful for stateful sets, except that because a stateful set has a kind of uh, a layer above it managing it, there's no way to get in to each individual pod and say the first pod should use IP.1 and the next should use IP.2, particularly if you're using a database like Cassandra that really needs the IPs to be stable. Um, so with an admission controller, he's hoping to, uh, to sort that out um, and um, yeah, just get in there and, and allocate the first IP to the first uh, stateful set pod. And then if it gets recreated, keep the IP. I had one uh, I wanted to call out. Nothing uh, as involved as something like that, but uh, just somebody from GitHub uh, or GitHub user Moycat, M O Y Cat. Um, they found a bug with uh, in the operator uh, around IPv6 and submitted an issue and then followed up with the PR to fix the issue. So, so appreciate that and wanted to call that out. Then I had a shout out for Casey, uh, recently fixed the problem where the host endpoints weren't getting uh, cleaned up when a node got deleted. Um, might seem like a small thing, but we have some enterprise customers that are deleting and adding nodes using a node autoscaler daily. And then we create host endpoints and we were seeing customers with many thousands of host endpoints for old nodes that were not used. And, didn't seem to cause any problems, but it was only a matter of time before. I don't know what the limit of number of unused host endpoints is before you'd see some strangeness or slowness from the CRDs, but we were going to hit it eventually. So appreciate appreciate the fix there. So yeah, no problem. Thanks for for raising that. I was super surprised to see that uh, that was the case. <laughs> And just in general, a lot of work's been done to clean up right all the other all the other objects when a node gets deleted. So uh, that's been that's been important. And then just yeah, getting that last piece in will be great. So we've got uh, Richard on the call who has graciously volunteered to um, demonstrate his route reflector controller that he's been working on and currently has a pull request up that I am halfway through reviewing. So this is gonna help me out in my review. Oh yes, uh, hello everyone. I hope you can see my screen. And maybe most of you already knew I'm working on that uh, root reflector topology autoscaler Kubernetes operator. And uh, the work is not done yet, but I have uh, something to show you. And in my dem demo, uh, I, I created a small cluster uh, on my, my, uh, my laptop. Uh, it's a five node uh, cluster and because I didn't want to waste uh, your time. And if you check, if we check the kubecutter get nodes, it's, they are not so ready because there is no uh, Calico installed on, on them. But uh, we can do it in, in a, first I, I will show, show the, the client uh, kind of template. Uh, it has one control plane and five worker nodes, four worker nodes, and I uh, disabled the default, default CNI to be able to run my own, in this case, uh, Calico. So next we can apply the Calico 3.17 uh, YAML manifest, Kubernetes manifest. And while is it, uh, working. 
I can show you what uh, have I changed in it. So first of all, I, <clears throat> I extended the uh, Kubernetes controller the custom resource definition with the root reflector related uh, configurations. Just uh, a few of them, you can specify the cluster ID or you can uh, specify incompatible labels, which uh, where, where the root reflectors will not install on that node. You can use uh, labels as selectors and also you can set the maximum number of root reflectors, the minimum number, and also the ratio between the root reflectors and the non-root reflector uh, nodes. And we can set the label, the node label for the root reflector and also the, the label, the value of the label. And one important is the zone label uh, the operator uses that label to differentiate between uh, zones. And the same change in the status of the CRD. And I had to extend the uh, cluster role for uh, the, the Kubernetes controllers needed some update node, update uh, role on the nodes, and uh, the list. And also I have to extend it with some uh, uh, BGP peer related uh, rights. And lastly, I, I created a BGP configuration, which uh, disables the node the node node mesh on on that cluster if you have any question question please feel free to interrupt me so back to the back to the cluster we can see that every uh, every pod is now now running and if we check the log of the Calico cube controllers, we can see it, uh, it's created three, three uh, root reflectors in the clusters. In the cluster, because three is the default value of the minimum number of uh, root reflectors. And if we check the BGP tiers, for example, we can see uh, several of them. Uh, there are uh, a few kind of uh, cluster topologies, and uh, one of them is the multi-cluster topology, which is uh, supported at the moment. In the multi-cluster topology, each the root reflectors are constituting one big mesh, but each uh, root reflector has its own uh, cluster ID. So that's how it can uh, stop the, the circular uh, advertising. So we have one uh, BGP peer configuration. The, the root reflector to root reflector. And uh, we can see that the, the node selector and the peer selector is also uh, has Calico root reflector label on the node. And we have uh, two the there, is, there are three root reflectors and two non uh, root reflector nodes and each non root reflector nodes connects to three uh, root reflectors so that's why we have a six a configura bgp configuration uh, in the on the cluster and if we check one of them BGP. Uh, that shows us that the node selector is, is one of the workers. 
and the peer selector is one of the root reflectors. If I list the, the, the root reflectors, where the label is Calico root reflector, then I, I, we can see there are three of them. And the kind controller plane is also selected as root reflector. So with the incompatible labels, which I've mentioned uh, previously, it's really easy to, to avoid the root reflector configuration, for example, on a, on a control plane. So that was our first scaling when we scale from zero to, to three, and it's time to uh, start scaling the cluster. But instead, instead of uh, scaling the cluster, we can edit the configuration uh, of the root reflector operator. So we just simply edit the uh, queue controller config uh, custom resource, the default one, and we can extend it with a root reflector and set the minimum number, for example, to four. If I edit and save that configuration, we can see that uh, the pod is restarting and now cross your fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's found that we, need, we needed an additional uh, root reflector and there is an error here, but I'm still investigating it, but it didn't uh, touch the functionality, which I want to show you. So if I go here and check the GP peers, uh, we can see there are only three of them because the five node cluster has now four root reflectors. So the only one non root reflector uh, is connected to three other root reflectors. And we can do the same if we change this to two, for example, it can uh, downscale the root reflectors after the changing. And while it is uh, happening, I can show you what is uh, missing. Uh, currently, as I mentioned, only the multi-cluster topology is supported, but uh, there is another, the single cluster topology uh, in the code base, but it's not enabled yet. I would like to enable that one too. And also later, I would like to implement more and more uh, topologies. There, is, there are some missing uh, input validation on the custom resource definition and uh, also the documentation and the manifest updates in the documentation are, are still missing. And uh, <clears throat> lots of testing is also missing. Like I would like to be sure that the different uh, resource syn synchronizations because it, the, the controller watches the Kubernetes nodes, the Calico nodes, the BGP peers and the, the cube controller configuration also. So I would like to test and be sure that all that synchronization doesn't uh, break the cluster. And one thing which uh, I would like to test too that uh, the Calico node controller has that sync labels options and currently the operator doesn't use th this. So I would like to test it uh, uh, what's happened for if, uh, if I enable or, or disable the, the, the label synchronization. And unfortunately, the, the downscale didn't happen because uh, it is still waiting on the different events. But uh, that's it from my side. Have you got any question? Thanks, Richard. Thanks for the demo. Very good. You're welcome. Yeah. Very cool to see it in action. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like a lot of work went into that. 
yeah, it was. And fortunately, my team uh, helped uh, much in at IBM, and also you guys in the community helped a lot. I don't want to waste your time. If the events are coming, and it will downscale the the, the cluster. But I stopped the sharing. Thank you so much. Thanks, Richard. Yes, thank you. And like I uh, messaged you today, I have some comments pending on that PR, but I still need to read a little bit more of it. I'm, uh, like I partially understand it at this point, but it's a lot to a lot to yeah. take in. I appreciate it. It's a it's a really big change, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can uh, get that reviewed and then, um, you know, released as like an alpha type feature so that we can get feedback on it and um, you know get it into more hands and then you know see where it goes from there. All right. Any other questions for Richard? What's the, um, you mentioned zones. Uh, what, what's a zone in, in uh, your operator? <clears throat> uh, so it calculates the, the required root reflectors per zone. So the, the operator tries to balance the root reflectors uh, within the zones. If one node went down, that uh, any non-root reflector has some uh, lag to other zones. So that makes uh, a more error proof. Oh, okay, so if you were in AWS and you had multiple AZs, you'd you'd want it labeled by AZ. And if you were in a data center with racks, you'd, you'd want it in separate racks or something like that. Yes. Uh, I can turn the share back because uh, I'm not cheating. <laughs> so here happened the, the thing and it's downscaled the root reflectors to two. And if we check the BGP peers, all of them here, and also there are only two root reflectors in the cluster. What was the uh, event that it was waiting for there? Uh, it watches the, the nodes, Calico nodes, the Kubernetes nodes, and uh, and on the, during the startup, because I changed the configuration, it restarted the pod. And during the startup, the synchronization happens really slowly. So it didn't get all the, the events immediately. It needs some time. I feel like we should be able to speed that up, but not sure the details of it yet. Mm -hmm. I tried to change the reconcile period but to 10 seconds, but it didn't have. Uh -huh. Is that, so that's because our like controller infrastructure is not listing that stuff right away. It's waiting for a, a like reconcile loop to kick in timer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ideally, I mean, I think that uh, right now, the, the fact that the controllers restart on config change is uh, not the ideal solution. We probably want to, for some of these, let it, let it be able to um, action that config change without requiring a restart, which would be nice. Um, any other questions?
please follow my blog post. I sent it, sent it into the contributors channel. If you would like to try, there are the commands and kind template and everything is there. Awesome. I will stick that in the meeting notes as well. Uh, if I can find it. Do you put it there today? No, no, not today. A few weeks ago. Last uh. year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Gotcha. I put it this chat too. Cool. Well, I think that's uh, the end of the agenda. If there are no other questions or anything for, for Richard or for anyone else, then uh, I will see you all virtually. Thanks for coming, Hi, everybody. everybody. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.